All right, Eric, we're going. I want it's 615 right now in the next 10 minutes by 625. Um, we're going to try to put together a 90 day training split for a half Ironman mixed in with a little bit of weight training and probably touch on a little bit of diet and nourishment for the next 90 days. For me, I want to try to maintain, maybe gain a little bit of weight leading up to the race while training, uh, training, running biking and swimming, not in that order, probably do a little bit of uh, more running and swimming than biking because you just have to pedal, as you would say, Eric. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's easy. And, and you ran a half Ironman or you did a half Ironman in what, July? Yes. All right, cool. And you also coach one of your teams that you coach at Denver is uh, the triathlon team for strength and conditioning. So you've got a good experience with this. You also train people. Um, personally, uh, in person and digitally, uh, and you change lives. So what we want to do today in the next 10 minutes, it's now 616. So ideally by like 626, we'll have like a, an outline of over the next 90 days of what we're going to do, what the training is going to look like. And, uh, starting today, I think. Um, so if you want to share your screen, Eric, let's just get into it. Yeah. Let's get just a quick overview you said you wanted to gain a little bit of weight things to track okay you need to track body weight every single morning after a pee okay like yep. you need consistency in that i would also recommend tracking calories for a period of time just to see where your maintenance is sitting at okay if you're losing weight you'll know to bump if you're gaining too much weight you'll know to cut down a little bit uh we can get more into specifics later if you'd like but this video we want to focus more so on training so I'm gonna share my screen. Let me know if you can see this. <clears throat> I've got good? it. Good. Yep. Okay. So right now we're in March, and three months is so much time. It's plenty of time to get prepped for a half Ironman, which is 1.2 mile swim, a 56 mile bike, and a 13.1 mile run. Let's absolutely go. Um, so March, I had this separated into two little blocks here for the rest of March. I want you lifting three times a week. Let's call this upper body day. Thursday would be a lower body day and Sunday would be just a get in the gym and movement variety day. Okay. We can get into specifics if you'd like there, but this is very general Tuesday. I want you to prioritize your weakest points which we agreed is swimming is that correct yeah so i don't i don't know yet uh but yes we'll say that for sure because i have experience in both biking and running um and i am quite a buoyant being so sure. uh swimming it, we'll see I'm, I'm 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 confident in it but i know it'll definitely be a, a challenge Okay, so this is a decent template here. Uh, biking, I firmly believe it's just mental, especially on race day when you're souped up on caffeine and carb loaded. Um, so we're, that's not gonna be a priority right now. So this is very general. It just says swim, run, swim, and then a run bike or a brick as the triathletes call it on Sunday there. That should be Saturday. Prioritizing swimming is gonna be huge um, because it, getting more efficient with movements is the best way to get faster at them that sounds obvious but the first time you go and swim you're going to swim 200 meters and be out of breath and you're like wow i suck at this so getting frequency of practice in over just one two hour session a week is going to be huge um so swimming twice a week is going to be big running is, is going to be big as well building capacity for the majority of your training you should be doing long, slow miles. So not pushing pace. Let's say your pushing pace is a six 30 minute mile. Like that's a very good mile for you. In your training, you should rarely exceed like an eight 30, even nine minute mile. The name of the game in Ironman training and endurance training is logging long, slow miles, building your aerobic base. So the one day a week where I, I would let you push it because I know you like you like to kind of go off plan sometimes, and I'll give you the option to uh, to to go off plan and get after it a little bit. So for this brick workout on Saturday, that's where we can push it, right? Like run at a tempo. Again, if six thirty is your record pace, maybe hit a four five mile run at like a seven to seven thirty pace. 
Um, this could also be a day where instead of uh, going for a long run, you could do a, a track intervals. So let's throw that in there. Interval option at faster than goal pace. For example, four by 600 at a six minute mile pace. Four by 600. And that's like pretty intense. Like I would start at literally like a four by even, or like an eight by 200 at a six minute mile pace, rest a minute in between that. Are you, are, you talking by, about, are you talking about 600 or is that meters? Meters, yep. So hit a track or a okay. treadmill um, and you could do it there. So like one day a week, it could be interval training. But for something like swimming, all of your training should be long, slow, um, easy pace swimming. Uh, biking, that can be, like, you can go for a long ride Saturday, almost treat it as recovery. Um, and if you're able to on another run or swim day here, feel free to throw in a stationary bike session. But I really don't think it's necessary in this first month of March. When we get to April to race time, which is about 70 days, uh, nothing is going to change aside from adding in an additional cardio session um, on this Sunday here. So I still want you to keep an upper body day. I want you to keep a lower body day. Very bare bones there. Upper body day can consist of pull-ups, rows, um, a pressing variation if you want, but most importantly, vertical pulling movements like a pull-up or a lat pull-down. Lower body day consists of bending your knees and hinging your hips, okay? So that could be a split squat. It could be a goblet squat. It could be a reverse lunge. Um, it could be an RDL. So that would be um, like the main movements to focus on on your lower body days. Swim, run, swim, movement variety day. This could become a long, slow run or more interval work seeing this as i write it again we're doing this on the fly spread your interval days out to at least two days apart so this could be a mobility slash recovery or long stationary bike day as the race draws near, having one day where it's like legitimately easy, stretching, yoga, mobility, recovery, like a 60 minute spin at a very light resistance, that'd be great on a Saturday. Um, but yes, as the race draws near, maybe some more interval work you could start throwing in there. Again, continuing to just build mileage week over week. Big theme with endurance training, Ironman training is not spiking your volume immediately. Like this first month of March here, when you're doing endurance training three to four times a week, do not go six miles every day. Legitimately go two or three miles at an easy pace. Go one mile at an easy pace. Walk a half mile. Go one mile at an easy pace, et cetera. Slowly build volume. Time is on our side here. Um, and, and then sprinkle in intensity. And intensity are these interval trainings, okay? Is that, make, is that making sense? Do you have any questions? Yeah, it makes makes complete sense. Is there is there um a benefit to also doing weightlifting while training for an Ironman? Yeah, so how I put this is doing like specific range of motion weightlifting, um, whether that could be a rack pull, Google it, um, or an, an RDL, training your body in ranges of motion that aren't necessarily found in an Ironman, like a split squat, you're never going to be in a split squat position doing it. But if you have strength in a deeper range of motion, one, your risk of injury goes down. But two, your subjective sense of effort goes down. If you're able to split squat a large amount of weight, taking a step running up a hill is subjectively easier. So that's like the value of building strength when you are an endurance athlete. And that's like, the whole hybrid athlete thing right now, gaining popularity, I think it's brilliant because you really don't need a huge dose of strength training. Again, once or twice a week, 
like on this lower body day, getting one heavy stimulus of a split squat and a hip hinge, like an RDL, is, is plenty to sustain a level of strength that is like sustainable during this three month period. Okay, so we've got about a minute or two left. Do we want to talk about diet, like carb heavy, protein heavy? What does that look like? We don't need to get into specifics, but yeah. over the next 90 days, what should I be? If I want to maintain and even like, ideally, you know, I'm not worried about the number. I just want to maintain size that I have now and build muscle and also like lose fat, which sounds like, you know. I want to do everything. <laughs> yeah. So I right know. Now, it's, yeah. I'm telling you, you this is not going to be a time likely where you're going to put a bunch of muscle on lifting twice a week that yeah, you have to prioritize your, your priority, right? Like right. F- four to five days a week of endurance training and two days of lifting, you're going to be in great shape. You're not going to be ugly by any stretch of the imagination, but you're also not going to be like Zach Efron Baywatch. Okay. So we have to accept that. Um, diet. What do you weigh right now? 162. 162. Uh, protein should be no less than, honestly, like 0.7 grams. You should be hitting minimum 113 grams, 0.7 grams per pound of body weight. You can go up to 130 there, but that like 0.7 grams per pound of body weight is enough to maintain your lean mass. So you're not going to become a skinny little endurance twig. Okay. As far as carbs go, you're training a lot of endurance volume here so i would start with two to maybe even three grams of carbohydrates per pound of body weight that's a bunch right 486 what does that look like breakfast eat several slices of sourdough bread and some oatmeal berries honey banana if you can squeeze it in okay that's probably like 150 to 200 grams then throughout the day can you just get like accumulate easy carbs. So what is it you have for lunch? Maybe a cup of rice with some lean beef, dinner, some pasta with some lean beef, right? Like, so that range of 324 to 486, that's accomplished through frequent uh, feedings of carbs, ideally like sparked early in the day with a big old breakfast. Um, that would be a good strategy carb wise fats. I'm not concerned with too much because those will come as a byproduct of the meat and eggs that I know you eat. Um, yeah. If you want to like good sources, olive oil, avocado. Um, those are kind of my go-tos as far as fats yeah. go, but as far as fats, I would not drop below 0.4 grams for the sake of hormone health, which again, I don't think will be an issue. Like 65 grams of fat is pretty easy to get if you eat, if you're low, like eat a half of an avocado, that's probably like 30 to 40 grams in itself. Awesome. All right. Well, I think we touched all the pillars. We touched this is kind of the split, the training, what exactly to do. And then we touched on diet. We're- and again, guys, this is very general. Like we can go into specifics with all this stuff, but this is a base skeleton. Just keep in mind the principles of long, slow, boring miles frankly like that is how you build your aerobic base to to become like a a good functional triathlete it's also worth noting just for the sake of the recording this is like a 10 minute crash course usually if eric and i are building out a system or a workout plan these calls usually go about an hour or two um and we get get a lot more deep but it was a it was a blast doing this and i think there's room kind of for me to like show you a little bit of like how I'd like to train a little bit more and but this was this was awesome so thank you Eric and thanks for the people that watched and uh yeah hopefully you got something out of it yeah thanks for tuning in folks catch ya peace